Hey, it looks like we are live again. So far, I'm waiting for a picture. Yes, there we are. So how are you guys doing? It is Wednesday and right before Christmas. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. So that's coming right around the corner. And let's see, we have Lee and Willie. Thank you guys for coming over. That's fantastic. John, how's it going? From upstate New York. How are you, sir? So glad. Mr. Leahy, Merry Christmas. How are you, sir? I'm so glad you can make it. So uh, this is part five, believe it or not, of painting Mr. Wonderful. So we're having a good time. We're just building it slowly. No rush, right? We'll get there when we get there. It's the light mixture, right? You just got to go with the flow and, you know, not rush into anything. But everyone get your Christmas shopping in and all of that. And uh, it's, now it's Christmas Eve. Do you guys all have off tomorrow? Now, Willie, sometimes you have off. Are you off? I hope so. And so today I went to the dollar store, got some air fresheners and uh, some pink pearls. So if you ever you guys order something from me, I always send you something free like a gift so I got some uh, pink pearls so Willie's off tomorrow how cool is that Joe how's it going oh wow listen to this so Joe said he got his airbrush and it does everything the Micron SB does Joe that is fantastic thank you so much for saying that yeah I really test hey Ryan how you doing good to see you sir so you got to test that and that makes me feel good. And I mean, I test them out like crazy before I send them out to you. So I'm so happy, Joe. Uh, USPS has been going crazy with the holiday season. One package that was supposed to go to New Jersey went to New York, then Jersey, then South Carolina, and now it's coming back to Jersey. So thanks for your patience, everyone. Uh, so Steve never has a day off. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> Me too. I feel exactly if I'm off. Hey, Brad, how's it going? So if I'm off, I'm thinking about work. So I never really ever am off work. But like, like Mr. Leahy says, I wouldn't have it any other way, honestly. And plus, these live streams are so fantastic. I just love hanging out with you guys. You guys are the best of the best. So... Uh, let's see. Oh, Raul, how you doing? Good to see you. How are you? So I did get to do a speed painting today. I don't know if you guys seen it, but if you get to see the speed paintings on my YouTube channel, guys, it's really fantastic because uh, it really condenses the whole method in like two minutes, which is really fantastic. So something definitely to to look into, right? So my phone just went off. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, let's go ahead and we will make me smaller and Mr. Wonderful bigger. So let's make that happen. Put him over here. So look at that. It looks like the chat view is not working, but you know, we know how this goes. We just have to go ahead and you authorize it as we do every week let's see that should do the trick let's see maybe and so it says it's authorized we'll see we'll even do it again and make sure that happens uh, authorize on YouTube there we go. Look at you guys. Look at that. Now you can see he's talking. It's really fantastic. So that is so great. So let's go back. I'm actually going to put this, this one over here. Okay. And put my pure ref over there. And Brad says he ordered a new compressor from an outfit in British Columbia last Thursday. It got here on Monday. That's really fantastic. Uh, so I always edit, no, that one pretty much, not much editing at all on the uh, 
on the speed painting. That pretty much was from beginning to end, Ryan, you know, it was pretty cool. So that's why they're good to see because it's basically the whole painting, like eight hours in just two minutes. Hey, Monty, good to see you. How's it going? Yes, just like the old days. <laughs> so it's Merry Christmas, Monty, and so it's so cool. Okay, so here we are, Mr. Wonderful. Let's make this happen. Let's see, just got to make this screen bigger. There we go. Okay, so now. I always begin in the light mixture when I'm doing, you know, I'm working for the first time in the day, right? Because when you're, well, not the first time today, but first time working on this painting today. So you always, always, always want to start your day with the light mixture. And, and I can honestly say that is without exception, without exception, honestly. Because when you are beginning to paint, you have to get the bugs out, you know, a relief picture doesn't go ahead and face, you know, face the, uh, the batter on the first pitch. So he has to get acclimated, get warmed up. So this is pretty much, oh, thank you so much, Ryan. I appreciate that. Oh, yes, that was, <laughs> thanks, Ryan. <laughs> Okay, so now what we're going to do is, as we're going in here, is we're going to mod modify some of these shapes here. While even with the light mixture, we're still darkening, which is good. There we go. So Bradley X, did Santa come yet? No, no Santa. I was I was hoping for a, a really cute elf, a female one, but she didn't come either. <laughs> and so so basically oh I have some really interesting news. So the first part of next week's live stream is going to be really interesting. We are going to have the first time on our live stream, and Willie, you've been with me for three and a half years, we are going to have an interview, a video interview. Yes, Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> hey, Wendy, how you doing? Good to see you. How's everything? How you feeling? You can't see me, Wendy? Is that what's happening? So as we're refining, we're getting the, the shapes much better. So I'm so glad you're here, Mr. Lee. All the way from the UK. Okay, great. So I'm not sure what was happening. So when we get to this stage, you know, especially in the beginning, what we can do is start modifying the shapes. Still coughing. Oh, but no fever. Thank God. That means you're on the road to getting better, Wendy. But such a harrowing, harrowing experience, right? Oh my God, so sorry you went through that. So next week we're going to have an interview with Ken from Badger, the CEO of Badger is going to be here. Uh, it's going to be like a Skype interview where they will be in one square to the, to the right and I will be to the left and we'll have an interview. You guys can ask questions live and it will be fantastic. I think that would be great. So first time on our channel that we're going to have a live interview and what I'm thinking of doing is doing live interviews maybe once a month. 
Does that sound something that might be interesting to you guys? You know, just once a month, maybe half of one of our live streams would be an interview with some of the big names in airbrushing or even big names in art or business. Uh, information on how to start online businesses that have to do with artists and stuff like that. Is that something that you would be interested in, guys? Just expanding the format a little bit. And I'm upgrading my software to it be even better. So that's one of the <coughs> good things about, one of the very good things about, you know, 2021 is that I am going to be expanding the live stream and beginning next week with an interview with with Mr. Mr. Ken from Mr. Ken from Badger and what an honor that is honestly and I feel I feel so excited for everyone and for myself, we get to ask questions and get inside information on our favorite airbrushes, and I think that is really wonderful. And so, what I would say is between then and now, between now and then, is to think of really good questions to ask them, and so that would be, you know, really fantastic. Uh, what a great opportunity. Sweet potato pie, Wendy. That looks amazing. Wow, that sounds that sounds amazing. Really good. <laughs> Ken does have some color colorful jokes. That's I have to say. Uh, there's there's no censoring Ken, so he's going to be coming with the jokes. But you know they're all in good fun, right, guys? He's hilarious. And so we have a really good group today already. We have 19, uh, 19 concurring viewers, so that's pretty good. That makes me uh, excited. There we go. So, so right now we're just getting reacclimated with Mr. Wonderful over here, and we're trying to just trying to get. As Mr. Wonderful says, get our beaks wet. <laughs> you know, wet our beaks uh, with this uh, with this portrait today. Part five, believe it or not. This one may run a little bit longer, you know. He is with Mr. Wonderful from uh, Shark Tank, Wendy. Do you see it? Do you ever watch that show? It's great. I mean, to me it's inspiring. It's about being an entrepreneur and, you know, people you know drawing caution to the wind and going forward in life and I really really admire that in people especially with our economy today right sometimes you just have to take a shot okay great so now I'm gonna take my single X eraser and we are going to just go ahead and just we're gonna pull out just a little bit of that skin texture nothing crazy just here and there Wendy yeah he's Canadian oh Lee says uh, that he still has air text paint from the 80s and it's still liquid Wow that's really good right Yes, Mark Cuban, he's he's a regular. He's like there all the time. And uh, his story is really great. Mark, Mark Cuban is amazing. You know, very inspiring to me as well. So they came from humble beginnings, and I'm at a humble beginning. <laughs> Even though I'm not at the beginning age, but I'm at a humble beginning. So, you know, and I see that, and honestly, that... that uh, that inspires me. Oh, only a few times? I'm addicted, Wendy. I watch it all the time. Without exception, at least 
At least several times a week, Wendy. That's me, you know. So I see there's a very, right here, I see that the, um, the contrast between his lip and the area above the lip is very low, meaning these values are very close to one another right here. And just by noticing that, you can see that it actually brings out some of his likeness. Like I said, I'm not looking for the likeness. I'm just looking for what the light is doing, right? Remember, we're light detectives, okay? Always, that's who we are. Just like that. Oh, you know, you can get him on Hulu because it's on all the time on Hulu or YouTube. They always show the episodes, not the full episodes, but you can get like different uh, excerpts from the episodes on YouTube. You can see everything on YouTube, even my videos. <laughs> Here we go. And little by little, I am not worried whether or not it looks like Mr. Wonderful because it's going to at the end anyway but I'm sticking with the program so that's what you have to do don't worry you know oh it's not coming out don't worry it will it'll happen as long as you know like you're playing chess those chess players out there the first 10 moves first 10 moves are developing your players and you shouldn't use one piece more than once and that is a principle in an opening same thing with painting you don't go out of the principles you don't rush into a medium mixture or a dark mixture before the painting is 60 percent done that's a principle there's really hardly any ex exception thank you so much i appreciate that willie there he is how's it going how's everything roy roy's in the house color graphics oh i'm so glad you made it sir so I got, you know, poor Roy's been waiting for his airbrush and I sent it out. He's in Jersey, I'm in Jersey, and he still hasn't received it. It went to New York State, it went back to Jersey, it went to South Carolina. I just got a message today, Roy, that it is going to arrive. It's on its way. Let's let's hope, you know. But if you know, if if it does get lost, we'll just We'll ship you another airbrush. I'll ship you another airbrush, sir. Definitely. So, so Roy is doing a painting of Tina Turner. You got to see this. It's just fantastic. He is really grabbing hold of this whole uh, thing with the mixtures. Just really amazing. And. So I want to do a show and tell a little thing I got from Mr. Leahy. Mr. Leahy talks about his show and tell, but I'm going to show you guys something and then you're going to tell me something or something like that. I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. So we are honored to have, Mr. I'm honored to have every one of you. And I really think you guys are just amazing. And Patty, how you doing? So I want you to see this. This is fantastic. And this was given to me as a gift from a very good friend. And it was made by the incredible Steve Leahy. And let's see if you, uh, what you guys think of this painting. This is a painting, right? <laughs> you know, this is a painting. This is just unbelievable. Let me put it up here. And it's made with uh, my inks. And if you, I gotta make sure it's in focus. So what's really great about it is it's my, it's my airbrush, my Extreme Patriot Arrow. You see that? 
with the backing and the shorter trigger and the longer needle and there's my ink mixture you know so how incredible is that so this was given to me by a really good friend and I really am going to treasure this forever an original an original Steve Leahy painting look how incredible it is huh unbelievable so that's my show and tell for today okay so so it's great to see uh, mr. David Lee Trevino how you feeling today oh you had the same handle oh yeah see that's that's the stuff you know that that handle really brings it all together for me you know it really does hey okay? so in my custom airbrush you know why I have the short handle because if I need to get to this trigger I can get to it one two three pull it out to blow out anything that might be in the nozzle that's fantastic uh, for cleaning it's one two three and in my and here you'll see let me see if I could focus that for you guys so we have the pack valve and we put a spring in there and that gives it just enough tension so if you touch it it doesn't move and actually gives you more micro control of that airflow which is really really fantastic the lower trigger uh, the uh, needle which is different than what comes with it and it comes out just a, a bit further and I also go ahead and I polish the needle so it comes out even further for even great detail greater detail so so that's that's a quick uh, description of the airbrush that Mr. Leahy painted for me. How fan well painted for someone who gave it to me as a gift. So Chris Garcia, how are you, my friend? How's everything? So Mr. Mr. Garcia actually commissioned me to make one of these for him, which is the. Uh, Extreme Patriot 105 and everything that the, the Extreme Patriot Arrow has except for those who need the bigger cup so that's a special order that should be coming pretty soon you know oh no problem Steve that's okay that's perfect that was like just an amazing surprise you know okay back to the live back to our regularly scheduled programming right so let's see so let's go ahead mr wonderful bring him over here okay now right over here i see i can make a little bit of an adjustment and so what i need to do now you will be making uh drawing adjustments throughout your painting that's okay uh, you can't make huge reconstruction uh, changes, uh, especially at this stage of the game. You have to cut your losses, but little things like this, you know, changing the shape just slightly, you can do that, no problem. That's, that's just fine, you know. Bigger cups. <laughs> So, Patty, how are you? So good to see you. Are you off tomorrow, Patty, or are you working? Patty works very hard, as, as so many of us do. Yeah, that was a great one of the Cutlass Supreme, right? That was a fantastic live stream there, Mr. Leahy. Miss, hey, what's up, Bill Kennedy? How are you, sir? Good to see you. Yeah, that was something. That was something to see. Really fantastic. I mean, really enjoyed it. Uh, and also, talking about the muscle cars, that was a lot of fun. And looking at your great work and the technique that... I mean, I learned something, so definitely check out Steve's uh, live stream every Monday at 6 p.m. to around 7.30, right, more or less, Steve? And I'll tell you, if you want to go to a live stream where you're going to learn something every time you're there, 
that's the live stream you don't want to miss, right? That's for sure. So, Bill, how is your granddaughter doing? How is she, how is she feeling? I pray she's doing well, very well, extremely well. Okay. Oh, a Christmas video. <laughs> Wendy says, paint Santa. Oh my goodness. So I have, uh, I have a lot, I have many students and I think every student is so important and I really enjoy it. And I think when an artist gets to a certain level, it's so important to teach because I learn so much from my students and I gain so much from their enthusiasm and, and the way they look at things. And it really does help me as a painter in my own work. And it keeps me grounded in the fundamentals. So, uh, so I have a, a young student. She's only five years old. And she is just incredible. Uh, just, you know, a lot of fun. So we did, so our project last Sunday was painting Baby Yoda, actually doing a drawing of how to draw Baby Yoda. It was a lot of fun. And oh, she's going on. So, so Bill, your grandbaby is going on Monday. Okay. Prayers for her. Definitely. Definitely saying prayers for her. So Joe says, Tim, using the aggressive eraser, are you going down to the grayer paper or just lifting off the white? Very interesting, and so, you know, for those of you who have done uh, digital art, you know that the pens in digital art are pressure sensitive, right? So the same is true for, you know, let's say, uh, you know, an eraser. So let's say over here I want to erase, but I just want to lighten it. So I'm going to actually give a lot less pressure. So. Knowing that the, uh, knowing that the least, if I give a lot less pressure, a lot less is going off, so I can adjust how much pressure to just how much of that ink I want to lift off. Now sometimes I'll put a, do a lot, and I'll get all the way back down to the gray of the paper, or I will just do a little bit and just lift it off just a little bit, you know. Oh, wow. So I'm praying that, you know, everything goes good with the uh, C CT scan on Monday, Wendy. See, like right here, uh, Joe, I'm going to put a little more pressure there because that's lifting up a little bit more, right? So it's all about the pressure. So don't forget, Steve Leahy's live stream, that is Mondays at 6 p.m. So Steve, is that, would you say that is uh, 6 to 7.30 usually, uh, you know, more or less? And of course, we're using our live stream, uh, live stream, our freehand shield here. And we're just pulling that up a little bit. Now, Brad says, if you do put too much pressure, you could damage the paper. There is a way to save it, but you have to sign up for Tim's classes to learn top secrets. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yes, uh, you know, if, if ever it does happen and you actually tear up the paper, you let me know and I'll, I'll help you out, definitely. But I appreciate that, Brad, holding on to the... Uh, to the uh, ancient secrets, right? You know, but definitely, uh, if you ever tear in too much to the paper, the paper will not, it'll be horrible, but there are ways to fix it. So if that happens, you let me know, definitely. But yeah, you find all that stuff out in my classes, of course. Okay, so, 
6 p.m. every Monday, drink cards and cookies given at the door. <laughs> An hour and a half, right, Lee? Very true, very true. And so I can definitely see that. Okay, so I think this is a little on the brown. No, see, it's coming on the brownish side on this monitor, but I see on YouTube it's not looking too bad. So, okay. Now, I think we're going to come in with some medium mixture and maybe darken things up before we actually go to attack with the white mixture. So that sounds, I mean, the white pastel. So that sounds pretty good. But like everything else, we want to make sure that we do not, I'm going to focus this up. See, with the SL2, the DSLR, you have so many options that you don't if you're just working with a phone or, or you know, a, a webcam or something like that. So next week is going to be getting of some of the... Uh, really nice upgrades of the live stream which i'm excited some software enhancements gonna cost a little bit more but you guys are worth it because i want my live streams to be better than some of the regular videos out there so that's what i want i want them to just be a place where you will learn and and just get all your questions answered so that's what I'm excited to bring to the table in 2021. Started doing live streams in 2017. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate it. In 2017. And I said to myself, self, I want my live streams to have the technique and the technical um, wizardry to be the best out there. And on a shoestring budget, too. And uh, so far, I'm happy with it. You know, there has been some technical coughs here and there. I wouldn't say hiccups, but coughs, because a hiccup continues to happen over and over again. But I've seen and blessed to actually solve them pretty quickly. So that's good, right, guys? <laughs> okay, so, so we're going to take this one. And this is uh, the one that Mr. Chris is going to be getting once we receive those parts, which should be coming shortly. And I like this one definitely for background, stuff like that. Uh, really fantastic. If you're going into acrylic and you're doing larger paintings, this is a good one too. Definitely. Great compliment to Extreme Patriot Arrow. So we're going to, whoa, look at that. That just happened. You ever forget to put that black cat, that cat needle cap off and then you spray it, it's like a gun moves across the room. Thank God the cat wasn't here. That could have been a, a trip to the vet. <laughs> that was scary. And so always shake your inks away from your painting, like way away from your painting, right? And so what we'll do, coffee cups and cinnamon cookies. Wow, that's cool, or cups of coffee. And so I'm putting just a little bit of that. Waste not, want not. That's what they say, right? Oh, you do it all the time. It's like, that is scary, Willie, right? Oh, unbelievable. So before, before you put it on your painting, right? You're going to take your painting, Mr. Wonderful. Go over here, right? You, so it's weird for me to talk to my painting, maybe. Anyway, uh, so I'm just going to do some tests. So you see, see how these airbrushes just get the most beautiful detail and the control is really great. So you can adjust the air pressure before you get to your painting, right? Some fading lines, which are great. Some daggers. Some L's. Okay, so now the painting is ready to receive the medium mixture, which is good. Yes, it is amazing that you are here, Lee. Thank you so much for doing that. For It's an honor uh, for you to come and, and sacrifice some, some well-needed sleep. So I appreciate that more than you know, sir. So again, with the aggressive eraser, 
Uh, I'm just going to ever so lightly. So you can actually turn an aggressive eraser into a non-aggressive eraser by how much you actually put pressure down. So it's all in the pressure, right? So that's very, very important. So now I have the medium mixture. What do I do with the medium mixture? You just start at the beginning and you just work on the eyes. And when we get into close detail like this, this is a job for the glasses, you know? Bam, so like Superman, you have no idea who I am. Who is this guy with glasses? It's still Tim. So let's see, so I'm going to blow up uh, the eye here. And let's do that here as well. So, so we're gonna start, of course, always with the eye on the left, which we have been doing since the beginning, right? So let's continue down that road, that same path. And let's go. So medium mixture and you see no spidering, which is good. We need a little focus, right? Let's have some focus, Tim. There we go. Cool. All right. And so, yes, if you go to my, uh, my YouTube channel, my videos, I've been doing some, some speed paintings. And it's not me showing off my technique but basically if you can see just the progression from light to dark and from you know uh, more broader details to real specific details and how I develop the portrait it's really good to see them and of course you know with the live streams and seeing them I think it's a great education for those who are unable to take my classes right now it's a definite way of, you know, getting better with the airbrush regardless. So you don't have to take, it's good, it's always best to take my classes. Uh, but if you don't, that's this very good way to learn. So I really wish that I had something like that when I was a student going to the academy. We only got to see uh, my teacher work at the end of the year, the last painting. We worked from life, right? So the model would pose for two weeks and every day for two weeks and we would paint and the teacher would come by and correct us. But what happened was um, at the end of the year, we would watch him paint and it was just like something you look forward to every year. And everyone was jockeying for a position behind his easel or you know behind you know over his shoulder and I'll tell you that was just such a rarity it really was compared to uh, you know today you get to see you know artists work all the time on YouTube standing right over their shoulder so how great is that Mike <laughs> Timothy o oh Mr. O'Leary hey Mike how's it going I thought you said Mr. O uh, Mr. Timothy O'Leary, who's a different O'Leary, right, Mike? So it's good to see you, Mike. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. So I'm so glad you're here, Mike. And uh, so how you feeling? I know you were having some trouble with your back. Uh, you know, I hope you're feeling better, especially with the holidays coming, right? And Patty says she's just started using the sketchbook. Uh, wow, that's great. I love that. So that is fantastic. Uh, so do you have a sketchbook and you're doing little airbrushes, airbrush paintings in that sketchbook, uh, Patty? Because that's where the real accelerated learning happens. When you do these small little paintings in your sketchbook and you're kind of drawing caution to the wind and you're not being so precious. It's, you know, if it doesn't come out, it doesn't come out. You can be more daring. So that's something to really, really embrace, honestly. I just finished my green tea with lemon. Medicinal purposes, you know, antioxidants and all that. Chris says, we get to learn thanks to great guys like you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, sir. And... You know, you guys help support us, you know, and make these shows, you know, your encouragement and your gifts and buying products. I mean, you guys help this happen, you know. This, 
this without you guys, you know, I don't know if we could keep the lights on, right? And it's true. So Mike S says better back. Not doing bank card. His bank card got taken for a ride online. Oh my God, that's horrible. Very horrible. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. So we got the 20 concurrent viewers so far. That's not bad, right? Definitely not bad. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on over to the other side. To the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. We're moving on up. Okay, so we are, so did anyone get that reference? Let's see. I, I just snuck in a little reference with that last phrase. Little 70s trivia for you guys. I'm actually giving it away. 70s trivia, oh my God. You guys don't know? Let's see. Yes! John, yes, the Jeffersons, that is so true. Yes, very good. So I wasn't the only, Willie, the Jeffersons, exactly. So I wasn't the only prisoner of, uh, of uh, Channel 5 or, uh, well, Channel 5 here in New York that had the Jeffersons on every night, Monday through Friday, which was great. Uh, oh, man, I wish they had TV shows like that. I miss it. I miss shows like that. So Wendy says, temps dropped there in, te in Texas, but think the wind feels colder than it actually is, right? Wheezy, love Wheezy in Florence. Florence was great. I like Florence. And so now we got that. And yes, the Jeffersons, Chris, very true, very true. Okay, so remember, so what we're going to do is when we go with the light mixture, we go down the center line, you know, like a karate master tells you to attack the center line. That is, are the crucial points. And so that's what we're going to do here as well. We're going to attack the center line. I'm just going to make sure that I'm not going too dark. And making sure that I definitely do not spider. Spidering is bad. Those who have taken my class know my whole spider theory and you know my analogy to spidering and what causes it and that cons uh, I sang the theme. <laughs> Ah, no, is that a quiz? Like, who sang it? I don't know. Was it somebody famous? They call, Bill says they call him Spider-Man. <laughs> That's funny. Bill thought it was a good thing. Okay, so we have some, we got some calming down to do. So right here, a little overzealous here. So we gotta calm this down, you know, is this right here. You can see this is a nice dark value, but in the reference, this is really very broken up and lighter. So I'm gonna use this aggressive eraser, but I'm also going to control my Definitely control the amount of pressure I'm putting there and just pull up just a little bit of that ink. Remember, we're in the medium mixture now, so we're playing a little bit more for keeps. But now we have a great opportunity to do this. Remember, when you have one form coming out and then all of this turning, it's turning away from the light and then all of a sudden it's light. What is causing that? Why is that happening? So. This is a shadow side and it's turning towards the light and it's turning away from the light. And then all of a sudden, inexplicably, you have this light shape right here, right against it. What's happening? Remember, you guys have to be light detectives. And I always tell my students, I don't care how your painting comes, as long as after the painting, you understand light a bit more and what's happening. So what's happening here? is that 
the form is turning, but there's a new form coming out here, and it's coming out in a different direction and on different planes. This is more facing the light. Right here is, uh, you know, facing away from the light. So the new form is kind of jutting out from this form, and that's why you have that breakup of the progression of light. Remember, there are so many different forms on the large form of the head, and it's really important to identify when the new form makes, makes its presence known. And our job is to actually describe that and make that turning away. So here's this other form. It's the upper part on the upper side, the upper lip, right? So here's the lip and over here this part. Now this exactly is one plane. You see how it's turning away and you can see it's turning away but then you have a cast shadow here but right now you see how this progressively gets darker. So that's one form next to another. So I'm going to go back to the light mixture and we're just going to describe this form above the lip here. And you see how all of a sudden this sort of gets light over here, right? So you have a darker value. Get This gets darker as it turns away from the light, right? And then you have a cast shadow, which the nose is casting onto this form. And then you have an indentation by the Cupid's bow, right? And that's an indent indent indentation on that form. So you see how this is indented here. And this area is actually not facing the light, quite almost like 90 degrees, and you see how dark that is. But with every indentation, you're going to have a uh, something goes in. It's going to it's going to be coming out on the other side, right? You know, there's going to be an uh, action and a reaction to form. So right here. You can see in the Cupid's bow, you have the reaction to the indentation of the Cupid's bow here, and this comes out just like so. And then it starts turning away from that, that bulge, so to speak, in the Cupid's bow. And that's exactly how you follow. So you're following the individual forms, which are really important, you know? Very true. Just like that. Hey, Hillbilly Evil, how are you? Mr. Scott, good to see you. How are you today? So cool to see you. That's great. So we're still talking about forms. And right here you can see, now you're going to be talking about the lip, right? So right here in the corner, it's slightly darker because this part of the lip is actually turning under more. And then it slightly gets lighter as we turn towards the center. But you see, all this is on the same plane, so there really isn't any gradation going on that, meaning it's flat going in one direction, it's not turning. Right here, this part of the lip is turned towards the light just ever so slightly, and you can see how the light sort of starts to intensify here. So those are things that you definitely want to you want to consciously understand what's happening, right? It's really very important to consciously understand. So my guess says, Tim, do you move your compressor closer to you? It sure is louder than last time. No, no difference, my friend. Uh, could be getting older. You know, it's a year old now. And uh, remember, I use a compressor six to eight hours a day, every day. So they, I kind of kill them, you know. I don't think they're, I don't think they're meant to withstand the punishment that I give compressors. 
That's for sure. I don't think they really are meant to do that, you know? So you figure six hours a day on a on an easy day, and you times that by 30, 30. so six times 30, how many hours is that? That is six, that's 180 hours a month. So I don't think they can really take it, you know? So Brad says he couldn't hear because of the compressor. Yep, but yeah, you know, they're, they just are not made to withstand the, uh, the forces of Tim. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm like that gorilla with the Samsonite, you know, I don't know if you remember that commercial, the Samsonite commercials where the gorilla would beat up the suitcase. That's me. They would give me a compressor and see how it would uh, work, you know. Now, Lee says not to go wrong on them, Tim. I, he replaced a bearing on his Iwata Powerjet Pro. Wow, it was an easy job. Look at that. That's great. You know? See, I, I admire you guys who fix stuff. I can't fix a thing, you know? Uh, but I did actually fix my DSLR, which was really cool. There was a piece of... A memory card little piece of plastic that was in there and it was stuck and I was able to you know squeeze the memory card in there but then I went online and on YouTube and said just take a paper clip and take it out and literally took a few seconds so you know uh, I'm not a mr. fix-it guy you know I'm just not one of those guys but sometimes I get lucky and so right here I'm just going to, I think we're getting close to coming in with some white, some white pastel, which is going to be pretty excellent. But I just want to, before I do that, what time is it? 10.22? We got time. So when you want to go to that next level and you want to say, let's go ahead and uh, let's go in with the white pastel. Let's finish this up. When you have that inclination, slow down. You know, and I tell myself, slow down. You know, it will, I will get there. But you know what? There's some skin texture to do. There is some light progressions to do. So I have to make sure that I slow my roll, right? And I don't just talk to talk. I don't just talk to talk, but I walk to walk. So what I teach, you know, when I tell people, I tell my students and you guys who ask me for help, and I'm glad to help you guys. I want you guys to do the greatest paintings you possibly can. So I always say, you know, don't go too dark too early. Remember, too dark, too early, too bad, too sad. So uh, we have to fight against our inclination, our proclivity to want to just go in with gangbusters and let's let's make this happen, you know, and... Let's know you have to slow it down. So watch me as I'm just slowing it down. I wanted to go in with the white pastel and I stopped myself. So always, always, you know, always, you know, attack slowly. Strategy. Remember Sun Tzu, Art of War? I spoke of that last week. Every battle is won or lost before it's ever fought. So I was back with the with the medium mixture, let's do some dark mixture, shall we? This is a very soft edge here, so notice no freehand shield. But I'm just going to darken this up a little bit. See that? So the whole thing about the importance of dagger strokes, I want to... Hey, what's up, Bill? How you doing? How you feeling, my friend? Very good to see you. All right. So always great to see Mr. Bill. I am so glad to see you, and uh, happy holidays to you and your family. That is so great. Always great to see you. Bill is an excellent, excellent painter. He does some great things, and uh, so, you know, great to have you here, Bill, definitely. And...
Oh, Wendy has that. Yes, you have that little compressor without the tank, which, you know, would drive me nuts. So you definitely got to get a little better compressor. Maybe a one or two. A two gallon would be nice. One gallons are rough, uh, but two gallon would be nice. But depends on how much you airbrush. If you airbrush like me, you want to get the biggest size possible. Because you... I kill them. I kill compressors. So you see how I'm just intensifying some areas? Let's intensify his hair here. So I did go ahead and crop it out because it looked like he, as jo uh, John said, looked like he had a cone head and that's not, you know, I don't want Mr. Wonderful angry at me. I want him happy with me so maybe he'll buy my painting, you know. Freehand shield here because we have a nice beautiful hard edge. What the heck? Now I do have some cutouts and let's see if we can use them. Let's see. So I keep all of my paintings, everything that I use for reference in these folders, and this way I can go back to them if needed. Or if somebody wants, you know, they said, Tim, I want another painting, not that one, but a different one of Mr. Wonderful, then I have everything I need, right? That's the wrong one. I need the negative, not the positive. Okay, here we go. So, we are going there we go bam so now we're going to come in with the medium mixture we're going to do this down the line with the dark mixture as well but let's make this happen with the medium mixture as steve would say what could go wrong right steve has some really great uh he had some great one-liners on his live stream. Pretty funny stuff. Weird, wild stuff. That's my Johnny Carson, if anyone was wondering. Lee, you have a great night, my friend. Thank you so much for hanging out. Merry Christmas. And it's always great talking to you. I really appreciate your time. And be careful over there in the UK, my friend. I know you guys are battling some stuff with that second strain. So praying for your country, country and queen, you know, and your people to do very, you know, be safe. There we go. See how we're intensifying? You know, it doesn't look so wishy-washy once we did this. Hold our breath. Wow, we did good. You know, maybe just a little bit off right there. But nothing we can't fix, right? There's never anything, well, there is, but you know, not this time. Sometimes there are things we can't fix, right? You know, it's like, ah, oh, that happens. All right, now let's go ahead. I'd rather you practice aim than dagger strokes. Dagger strokes, for some reason, have become the most important exercise in airbrushing. And you know what? I'm going to dispel the myth. It's not the, most imp it's not the most important of exercises to master. I don't do dagger strokes all that often. I think it's good for t-shirt painters and stuff like that. You know, dagger strokes are important. But I don't come across the need to do a dagger stroke too often. So that's why fading dots are important. You know going back and forth like that, you know, pumping the trigger, that's much more important, I feel. Okay, so we were darkening areas, so I'm gonna darken this area here, so let's do that with the medium mixture. Now remember, we still gotta go in with the dark mixture pretty soon. And remember, dark mixture is probably like 5%. You'll use dark mixture 5% of the time. So medium mixture, 60%, I would say 65%, uh, light mixture, 65% of the time. And I would say medium mixture, maybe 30%. And then pastel and the dark mixture will be the other 5%. I mean the remaining of the 100%. So you see how we're, 
And you see, he's he's coming together, you know. I mean, he's starting to look like Mr. Wonderful. So, like I said, not worried. You know, there were times when I'm sure you guys were like, I don't know what he looks like, Tim, but it's not Mr. Wonderful. But that's okay because I didn't get hung up in whether it looked like him. And that's, you have to just really just, like in chess, stick to that opening, no matter what kind, what, what's going on. Stick to that plan of the first 10 moves, you know? Very, very important. And we're just gonna do some, some texture here. We're gonna come in later with the white pastel to really pull that off, you know? Okay, so the eyebrows get a little bit fatter up here, like that, right there. One second rule, we won't fail you. The one second rule won't fail you. We fail the one second rule. Wendy, I mean, Patty, thank you so much. And Wendy, thank you too. Wow, fantastic, thank you. You know, it's little by little we'll get there, right? But sometimes when you're doing the live stream, you know, you you kind of like get a little hot under the collar. You're like, oh my goodness, it's not looking like anything and you're doing it live. So, but that's when you just, that's when I just say, stick with the program, Tim. Don't get, don't get excited. Don't worry. And that actually, you know, helps me in my own painting when it doesn't quite look like the person and I'm doing a uh, doing a portrait commission because if it doesn't look like the person when you're done, you don't get paid, right? So, so yeah, you just stick with the program, and you guys do that too. So don't go too dark too early. Don't go into white too soon. Stay and work on on all different kinds of texture, skin texture stuff like that. Going back in with the going back in with the uh, light mixture, and we're gonna worry about. Just some some texture here in his shirt, right here, and right up against the neck here, against the shirt. So remember, we're talking about big forms and little forms. His neck is a big form, so you see how this is much lighter over here because it's facing the light this cylindrical form of the neck. And so as it turns away from the light, we get a really slow gradation. So we're talking about large forms and small forms. This is one of the larger or major forms of his portrait here. So we're just going to make sure we gradate that down. If we didn't, and we didn't have that gradation, it would look out of place and ununified. And you want to make sure that your painting has a unification of light. You want the light to be washing over the forms in a very um, complementary way or a similar way because there's only one light source and one major light source and everything is being affected by that light source. Now I said one light source because there's always a reflected light, light that's bouncing off for other objects and bouncing back into the shadow area. This is a very controlled uh, portrait in a studio. So this person is very professional. They have all the lights, you know, the photographer. So you're not getting much reflected lights, but you really are like right here. There's a lot of reflected lights from the cheek here in the eye socket area. So even though you have that, you're still going to find some reflected lights here and there. See that? So there's going to be, uh, even though it's a shadow and a value, it, that's not the end of the story. There are lights within each shape, even if it's a shadow shape, you know. So we are at 234, so I'm going to take a water break. So. Anybody have any questions while I take this uh, quick water break? Uh, any questions about technique or anything that I've been working on? That Any questions, anything that you're having trouble with your painting that you're currently working on? 
So while I'm drinking my water, if you have any questions, that would be great. And I'm really happy to answer them, by the way. Oh, Wendy says cake. <laughs> Actually, I am going to be making uh, some banana bread for my neighbors tomorrow for Christmas Eve. And I'm also making for, for my mom and sister, I'm going to be baking apple bread, which is going to be great. Oh, coffee. Oh, you have some coffee? Oh, that's cool. Uh, I, I, had, I was going to do a second cup of coffee today, but I'm trying to be good because I'm like 4 o'clock in the morning wide open when I have that second cup, when, you know, Wendy. Uh, so I'm trying to be good, and we'll see how that goes, you know. I'm also thinking of getting rid of this beard. I feel, I don't know, it's... I might want to get rid of the beard. Wendy says, but look into look into her eyes, Tim, you need coffee. <laughs> You're a bad influence. You're a bad caffeine influence. <laughs> but yeah, so any questions you guys have about technique, I am here. And I know, I you know, I'm right there with you with the creamers. I love the uh, Aldi's. Which is, you know, you love the Aldi's creamer. I think yours is Italian cream. Is that your favorite, Wendy? So I'm glad you're feeling better, Wendy. I'm so happy. You know, that makes me really, really happy that you're feeling better. This whole thing with COVID-19 is so scary. And when one of my friends and loved ones get it, it's just really frightening, you know? And yes, uh, Patrick, how you doing? How's everything? <laughs> Don't worry, you know, eventually we'll be unforgettable. Uh, Brad says, look at Tim's beard, ain't it weird? But don't be scared, it's just a beard. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's hilarious. So, anyway, so, you know, what's really hilarious, okay, you guys don't want to look at me. You want to look at Mr. Wonderful, so... I'm shrinking. There we go. See me shrink. There we go. Shrinkage for those Seinfeld fans out there. <laughs> I won't go any further. Otherwise, it will be PG-13. So let's see. Now, we are going to continue a little bit in the forehead. I think we're kind of neglecting something here. Uh, uh, thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. If you were saying that I was a very good man, I'm not sure. But if you did, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. So let's move over to the forehead. And there's more going on with the forehead that meets the eye. So I'm just going to make sure I'm getting stuff turning. Now, when you guys order from me, I always try to throw in a free pink pearl because I love them. I just got three today. So if any of you guys order, you know, anything from me on paintingglyphs.com, I have, you know, the airbrush, the customized airbrush, the inks, uh, different kinds of aggressive erasers and stuff like that. But I always try to throw in some free stuff to you guys. And I love these pink pearls. So if you get a chance to, you know, pick one up, they're inexpensive. But you can see when you have large areas to erase, the pink pearl is not aggressive, right? And it just is so clean when it just erases. So, and everyone had a pink pearl, right? We all had pink pearls as kids, you know? The water was cold. <laughs> That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Willie, we're on the same page. That is great. That's why I love these live streams. You guys crack me up and girls. You know, you guys really do, you know. Oh, I was talking about a necklace. <laughs> Wendy, that was funny. Okay, so you see how we have, you know, this is a muscle. 
that wraps around the uh, eye socket, the top of the eye socket. So that's what's causing this is a muscle. So we're just, see how, so now we couldn't do this. So that's why you don't worry about likenesses, getting a likeness in the early going because you can't do this kind of stuff, you know, until you have everything else in place. So to try and get a likeness in the early going is like trying to, as Wendy would say, delicious cake. Yes, Joe, in the pool. <laughs> and John says ZZ Tops. That was a great band, actually. Uh, yes, those guys had some beards, huh? That was uh, lots of testosterone going on with ZZ Top. What a great, great band, right? The 80s. A lot of that foofy music going on in the 80s, but ZZ Top was doing some really great stuff. Definitely, definitely getting there, right? Getting there slowly, right? Hey, John, good to see you. How are you? How's everything? All right, John's in the house. John Diekman, all right. And John is from Wisconsin. So it's always great to have Wisconsin in the house. So we have, oh, so, so now we have the aggressive eraser and we can be a little bit more aggressive. Now here's the super, super, super rare. This is a Venus Type E race, and it's even more powerful than the other eraser. So you see, you could really, uh, really, you know, pull up some of that, uh, some of that ink really quickly, which is really good, really very effective. So we're starting to make it look like Mr. Wonderful, but that's happening on its own accord. We're not worried about likeness. Don't worry about likeness until the end, right? So, so what does Bill says? Oh, cool. Oh, Mr. Anderson. Hey, Mr. Anderson, how you doing? Good to see you. So glad to see you stopped by, my friend. So that is great. Always great to hear from Mr. Anderson and John, John Diekman, and everyone that's here. You guys are just fantastic, I have to say. So getting things to turn, right? So that's going to be the theme for today's live stream. Making things turn, not just the head, but all the little forms are turning towards the light and away from the light. And just like when, uh, you know, two... Uh, Two plates, tectonic plates, you know, uh, bunch up against each other. They're going to have a reaction. They're going to, one's going to win, the other one's going to bulge out. And that's what happens when you have the cheek coming over into the cylindrical, uh, the teeth, the cylinder of the teeth over here, just under the nose. That's one form bunching into this form. You see how that bunches out and this goes under? So... It's a lot of things going on, you know, so it's really very cool. So think of it like almost like a geological exploration when you're painting the portrait or anything else for that matter, but especially the portrait because everything is so in your face, right? You know, and in their face, you know, so no pun intended. Um, so let's do a little bit of white pastel, shall we? So where is Mr. Steve Johnson? He's always so uh, excited about this and that makes me excited about the light mixture. Now we're just gonna do the first uh, light mixture and of course, uh, 184, okay. Oh, thank you, I really appreciate that, Patrick. Thank you. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, let's move that over. See, I'm just taking some of that white pastel, putting it right there. And now I'm going to take my paper stump. There we are. I'm going to just pick up some, not that much. Guys, if you don't have these gloves, they're on paintedglyphs.com. So uh check it out they are fantastic once you have them you will never go back uh, they protect your work from the oils in your hands and i'll tell you uh you know 
if you ever had that happen, which I'm sure you did, it's very frustrating. So let's go to the I. Remember, we always start where we we always start where we begin, or we begin where we started. So we're gonna go with this I right here, and in the corner we have a light. Now this is a very strong light, so I'm even thinking that Mr. Fonz and Porter might be the best job, just like so. We have a definite shape here, and Mr. Fonz and Porter might be the best for that. Now, if you're interested in Fonz and Porter, let me know, and I'll talk a little about it and why it's so great. And those who have it know why it's so great. Just like that. Then just... One second rule. One second rule is going to keep you from going a little bit crazy with this, you know? Um, the Fonz, all right, cool. Fonz is definitely cool. <laughs> and we're going to come in with the white pastel. And yeah, you're going to get a little crazy like I just did. You know, like, Tim, what's going on? You've got a lot of white pastel you got to get rid of. No, I just went a little crazy. So I'm just going to tap it with an ED eraser, and I can just calm that down to whatever degree I want. You see that? Which is really control. I'm a control freak when it comes to art. Everything else, I'm kind of live and let live. And, you know, I'm not much of a control freak. You know, but in art, I'm a control freak. And let's see, here is where his soul enters. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. That's so fantastic for you to say that. Thank you, thank you. Wendy's fantastic, and I'm so happy she's getting better. Live streams would not be the same, you know? Oh, thanks. And you see, not just in the eye, but over here. Okay, went a little crazy, Tim. See that? Look, Tim just went a little overboard. You just tap it. Remember, I've been doing uh, pastels for years, you know? And people say, how many years? That's right. You know, I'm not going to give out my age, but I've been doing pastel for many, many years. So I can control this stuff. So, you know, that's why it's okay to put more down. You can always take it away, you know, and which is good. Now, we still have a lot of work to do. Don't get me wrong, you know, let's not get too happy about it, right? That's what I say to myself. Don't get too happy with yourself, Tim. You have a lot of work to do. But we do have this little bit of light coming here. Remember, same thing. With the eraser, just like in digital art, Pressure is everything, pressure sensitivity. And what I learned from doing digital art is that the amount of pressure when you use any kind of material in, in painting or drawing, pressure is everything. You know, you can put a little bit of pressure and it just makes that white a gray, right? So those are things that you always have to keep in mind. So always keep, so let's look out and let's see how we did, okay? Okay, he looks a little bit more alive, right, Mr. Wonderful? He's coming. He looks like he's crying. I don't want that. So I'm going to get rid of this light. It looks makes his eye a little too watery, right? There we go. So I don't. And I'm going to calm down that highlight a little bit. Like I said, you know, we don't want him to look like he's crying. So we're just going to take that away a little bit. So remember, like in karate, you attack the center line, right? The center line is where all the balance is. So if you follow the center line down, you're going to 
have balance going from the light to the medium to the dark. Remember, Daniel son, balance. You must have balance. So those who are Karate Kid fans, Cobra Kai in January starts again. So that's really exciting, you know. So I'm excited about that. Uh, Monty says, Tim, is the Fonz Importer chalk base or graphite? It's actually a chalk base, and it works fantastic. I've done tests on it, and it doesn't yellow, and it lifts off, it erases so easily. It's the best thing since sliced bread. It really is. Uh, in your order, Monty, did you get the, the Fonz Importer, which I hope, if not, when you purchase the airbrush, we'll see about, you know, maybe purchasing that. That would be really great. So, so, uh, so I'm happy to say that Monty uh, let me know that he is receiving his uh, package. It's finally arrived in South Africa, which is a relief, you know, very much a relief. Okay, so let's go ahead. Center line, Tim. Balance, Daniel Son. Balance, Tim Son. Okay, so we're going to make this nose. Three dimensional, right? So remember, think of white pastel like snow on a mountain, right? What's facing the storm is going to get more snow. And what's not facing the storm is going to get less snow. Scan the floor, wash the car, paint the fence, <laughs> sand the floor, right? That's very true, John. Cobra Kai shows Daniel Son is. You know, it's interesting. I, you know, I like the fact that it just shows that, you know, villains are not villains always, right? It's, it's always one side of the story, right? And I, and I think in the original Karate Kid, you know, uh, you know, the bad guy, you know, nobody was really talking about his story and I think they made him a three-dimensional character in uh, Cobra Kai which was really great right so uh, Johnny right the character of Johnny I always liked the character of Johnny I thought he was uh, very interesting and I'm so happy because you know not everyone always gets the girl and gets everything and you know and I, I think that's what I like you know that he's an anti-hero which I like and I like heroes that are flawed and not perfect. Uh, Monty says, uh, I can go and pick it up today. Wow. And so that's great. Let me know everything arrived perfectly. I'm saying a little prayer. Everything arrived perfectly. So that's what I'm hoping. Uh, so Bill said he offered, when did the opportunity to come clean? That was very nice of you. Yes. <laughs> See that? And, uh, that's hilarious. Now watch as his forms start to turn. See, now we're coming in with the lighter forms, not just the highlights. Slice bread. Now you're dating yourself. Yes. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yes, slice, the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> That's so true, Joe. And Steve says he just wants cake. So I went to Aldi's, which is a supermarket here in the States. And literally the line to pay went like three aisles. It was just so unbelievable. And these older women, they kept cutting in front. But the way I was raised, I'm like, sure, go ahead, ma'am, you go ahead. So I kept going further down the line, and these older ladies, they were like, oh, can I go? And it's sure, no problem, you know. And but it was funny. I guess they they were in a rush. They just wanted to get out of there, you know. I don't blame them. I was in a rush. But if I can make their day a little better by saying, go ahead, it's all right, you know, you go first. And boy, did they whiz out of there. They were, they bagged their groceries and got out so fast, you know. Yes, back in the day, they used to have to, right? Sliced bread was like a modern thing. It, 
It had to do with a knife. Yeah, but you know, there's so many good things in the way things were, right? I'm not saying that all innovation is important, right? But I'm not saying that, you know, we didn't lose something with innovation. I think we did. So right here, we do the highlight, but here, I want you to just lightly rub in. Remember, you can control the amount of light by the pressure. And you see when I'm putting in just a little bit of pressure here. See that? And now it's sort of a light gray, right? And I'm just lightening, I'm just lightening ever slightly the, the ink that I put in with the airbrush. And we're making that nose come forward, right? That's what we want to do. Yes, I, I, I'm not the older people yet. I'm fighting, you know. I'm, I'm fighting against it. I'm railing against the night, you know. I, I know I'm getting older, but I, it's just a number to me, and I'm sticking to that story. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true Bill and so I'm really happy with the way that Mr. Wonderful is developing but I'm not getting too happy right so let's not let me that's not me let's not let me get too happy there's still a lot of work to do a lot of work and uh, so we're coming up to uh, 11 o'clock so that's pretty good so I'm happy. I'm happy we're making some progression. So you're going to see I'm going to be putting in some detail and I'm going to be getting rid of stuff. And so center line, right, Daniel son? So let's continue down that center line. And we also got to do the center line up in the forehead, but that's not a major form. So as what I'm looking for, I should, I should say. So it is a major form, but it's not a focus for me though I don't forget it <laughs> oh my god I hate when everyone calls me sir I like when they said hey kid but honestly I got like an, I have like an arrested development or something because I still feel like a kid honestly I really do how sad right how sad. I had someone tell me I have arrested development. And I'm like, okay. And is, and yeah, and, and what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so Bill has a friend, they call him Beware. He was a vice president of a local motorcycle club, right? Brad says the portrait's looking good. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Remember, you have those tectonic plates that go up against each other, and so one will force one to bulge out. So you see how the lip is coming out, and it's causing a bulge here from this upper area above the lip. So with that bulge, you'll see you're going to have a reaction, right? That lip is going to cause a reaction of this form. Remember we worked on that form? So it's not just the fact that that it's light above the lip. That would just be like telling a story but not really explaining what happened, you know? Like, uh, you know, like World War II was really bad, a lot of people died, and that's it. No, there's so much more to that. What happened? You know, who were the good guys, who were the bad guys? all that different stuff. So so why it's lighter here is because the lip is intersecting with the form above the lip and causing this bulge. See that? And now that's not bad. It's looking better, right? It's looking better. <laughs> Color graphic says he's the old man around here. <laughs> ah, your your experience, my friend, not older but better, right? You know. 
in the business world they see us as oh but in the art world we're the masters right so uh you know we're the ones with experience so that's a good thing i think i like the art world because you know when you get older you know you don't lose your value in art right but in the business world you know that seems to happen but i'm so glad it doesn't happen in the art world And there's no retiring from art, that's for sure. No crying in baseball. So you see how we're making this form turn here, right? So you see how the, the cheek sort of makes a turn here and turns into this area. So we weren't able to do it until we can come in with this lighter form and sort of get that turn there. So now oh you got 49 wow so yeah so how old are you tim i am susan how old was that that's right so that's my story and that's what i'm sticking to how old are you that's what i say and like they say i have arrested development so it's all good in the hood you know and so Joe says Tim using your inks on a finished portrait do you use any kind of fixative or sealer very good question no I don't remember I'm a trained oil painter trained classically and Jack Benny yes oh Rochester <laughs> 39 uh, I'm a trained uh, classically trained oil painter and pastel painter and with pastels I was trained never to put fixative on there and why is that why never put fixative on there well the main reason is is when you spray a chemical on top of a dry surface it's going to dull your image it's going to dull your whites and it's also going to get rid of the wonderful texture you fought so hard to get so that's why I never put fixative the great thing about pastel is once you put it under glass with a mat or even without a mat just have the glass right on top of it that will actually hold it and remember when we're using pastel we're kind of like rubbing it into the surface so it's not like one of those volatile dusty pastel paintings you know that just has all the pastel on the surface so you see i'm kind of rubbing that in and so i have pastel paintings that are framed for many many years and look just as well and safe as the day I painted them and so that's really great so there's no need for any kind of chemical uh, fixative on there now it is your own preference but I don't want to darken anything because when I'm done with a painting that's exactly the way I want it for the rest of the rest of my life is the way I want it to look right so very great question so we're gonna so we're continuing uh with this whole light exploration right so here in the lip you'll see that the lip is going under right you know i got mr wonderful all hiding in there so let's put him right there there he is so this way you can see what i'm doing and why why is he doing that right you know so now you guys know so we're just going to continue down the center line and I'm going to take my aggressive eraser and I'm just going to break up this this light here and because in the lip it's broken up because of all the texture that's going on in the lip and so we'll do that I don't want to get too involved with texture just with detail just yet because we have a long way to go but what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we describe the forms here see that this form coming out just like this there's hardly any edge over here there's an edge here but it kind of disappears here in the lip one second rule will tell you exactly where that edge disappears you know he's not a woman so he doesn't have lipstick and his lips are kind of nondescript uh, as far as the edges go with the top of the the top of his uh, lip and just underneath his nose so this cylindrical uh, 
the cylinder of the teeth, you know, that is uh, kind of blending in with his lips. Now women, they have lipstick and lip liner and they could really accentuate that. Us guys, we don't have that. So that's rough, you know, we just got to go all natural. That's not fair, you know. And so we have some reflected light here on the lips, but Tim, don't get overzealous, which I did. So the event I do get overzealous, I can just go ahead and tap with the kneaded eraser. So one of the things I want you to really know is that it's so important to go back and forth with the materials, right? That's what I want you to be able to use. Use the materials and have a, uh, be fluent in the materials, right? That's what I want for you guys and girls, to be fluent in the materials so you know when to go from the eraser to the airbrush, to the light mixture, to the dark mixture, you know, all of that. I want that to happen, you know? Most youth, most, most youth does not have patience. I agree, Scott, definitely, 100%, you know? And um, we need to get some youth interested in airbrush. Yes, you know, I think that's great. And um, hopefully that'll happen, guys, right? And we just got to keep keep airbrush fun, you know? And, and I think the kids will come. And Wendy says, well, the young people can't do very much. They need adult skills. So airbrush is far, far away. I can understand that. But this is when, you know, and I have a, a five-year-old a five student and... For me, it's great because I'm able to give her even a foundation, you know, even if it's just, you know, a slight foundation, you know, a very basic foundation that she can build on. And that's what I hope to give them. There we go. So it is looking a little bit more like him, right? Just a little bit. Okay, so center line. So now the chin, right? So let's make that chin happen. So we have this right here. Remember, one form. See how this goes gradates uh, down because it's going away from the light. But then all of a sudden, you have this, uh, this light right here. And what's causing that is, of course, you know, one form uh, buttressing up against another form in adjacent form and so that's why you have that remember light detectives right light detectives are yes and uh, Brad is doing some great things he's a bus driver for kids and he has a every Christmas he has an art show with the kids that he drives and I just think that's fantastic and uh, I can't wait to see some of that work Brad See, I think it's so important to inspire young ones. So going back to Mr. Wonderful here, we're just going to make this chin, which is a different form. We have to make that turn. But we don't want to go crazy with it, right? We don't want to get jiggy with it. So we have to calm it down. And how $50 for first place. Can I enter that contest? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's that's a good contest right there. But it's great that you inspire the kids and they get excited and you know, a little kid, fifty dollars is all the money in the world, right? Oh, I gotta ride the bus, and that's a little out of my way considering it's Manitoba, Canada, right? So it might not be cost effective. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have this proclivity to move around, and that's good. That's my training. So my training is to continue moving around. Paint the ensemble, right? And don't get caught up, you know, almost instinctively when I get caught up in one area, I tend to move around. So that's what we're doing now. But let's continue here. And then we have this... See, we have this form coming here, 
right? It's a little bit lighter. And then it goes in. We have an indentation. And on every, every indentation, we have a corresponding bulge, right? And there's a bulge on the other side. And you'll see that when you look at portrait paintings of the old masters, how they do that, you know, that each each indentation has a corresponding bulge. Maybe the vocabulary isn't quite there, but I hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying, you know. Hey, Tone, how you doing? Good to see ya. That's so great. My guest says, I want a short bus. Oh, so all, so all my friends can come for a ride too. Oh, okay, I want a long bus. So all everyone who can pick people up, you know. And uh, so that is so cool. So I, I never was far from my school. There was one when I was in junior high school and I lived in a rich town for a little bit, and I was just underneath the uh, cutoff for the school bus, and I had to walk in the cold. Wow, that was uphill both ways, you know? <laughs> but uh, it was rough, you know? It was rough in the winter, and I missed a lot of school that year, I'll tell you. But one of the biggest things that happened in my life is from there, my family had financial trouble and we went from that rich town in New Jersey and in my eighth year of school uh, we moved to New York City uh, story of Queens and I thought that was the end of the world I mean I went from a rich town to you know a very poor area in Astoria but you know what the kids were great I got a part-time job down the street I had all kinds of friends in junior high school in the rich town. They were a bunch of jerks. And not to say that all rich people are jerks, but those kids were jerks. There were some really cool kids. And how I, you know, got myself from getting my butt kicked every day is that I was good in sports. So I had some sort of uh, credentials for that. But when I was in New York City, I found out that they had an art school because uh, I was in junior high, they had a high school of art and design, which was just for kids to just do art for six, six, six periods a day. And so I was so excited. And from then, I had like a year to try out for it. And I had a job, you know, a little job after school. And when I was done with work, I would go to this little art store and get these Walter Forster books on oil painting and drawing the figure, uh, pen and ink, watercolor, nudes, you, you name it. And so then I was able to, uh, after that, I was blessed to take the test, which rhymes, and I got in and I was so happy and so thankful and that would put me on this path, you know? And, you know, it's been a rocky path, you know, it has. Financially, it's been a rocky path. Uh, but I'm just so happy I made it to that school because I can't imagine what my life would have been like without the High School of Art and Design. I heard, right? Uh, Chris says he knows Astoria now. I haven't been back since like 1983. And it was, it was all, uh, it was all Italian, German, Irish, and Greek. And it was all old families, you know, older families that had been there, very poor. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of immigrants. And, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to be amazed to see how it looks now. And it was a tough neighborhood, right? You, you, you didn't just, you know, walk around at night, you know. That just wasn't what you wanted to do too often. So it, it was kind of rough. But, you know, to have that job and to be able to afford art supplies, and it was just an amazing experience that what I thought was the end of the world at first, moving to New York City turned out to be amazing tone. So nice artwork in Astoria. I didn't know that. Wow. So there was no artwork in Astoria. Astoria was old butcher shops and bodegas and 
Well, there was one bodega in Astoria, and there was Steinway Street. It was just a really quite fascinating place, I have to say. So, uh, so we went along the center line of Mr. Wonderful here. So that means we have to go up. Now, of course, there's more detail to go in here, but we have to stay. Lots of murals. Wow. There was no murals when I was there. Oh, my goodness. Nothing like of the sort. You know, it wasn't even graffiti back then. You know, it was in the 80s, but in that neighborhood, it was... For lack of a better term, it was all controlled by the mafia. So nothing happened until they decided it happened. And um, so, like I said, I, I have experiences in Astoria, you know, working at a butcher shop in the neighborhood. Uh, I'm not going to talk about. But yeah, it was a very interesting time in New York City. The early 80s, definitely... Uh, definitely interesting times. But I was so happy to get into that art school. It was really something. Now, Calvin Klein went to my high school. That's a famous uh, Harvey Firestein. Fires, yeah, Harvey Firestein. He went there. Uh, I think the drummer from Kiss. It's a lot of famous people. And you see now I'm working on the forehead, right? Because what's Mr. F what's Mr. Wonderful without the rest of him, right? You know, it'd be great to get all that perfect, but if we don't get what's going on above his eyes, it's just not going to work, guys. You don't get what's on above. If you don't get what's above the eyes, it's not going to work, guys. All right, so. So Mike says he lived nine tenths, nine point five tenths of a mile. Had to live live a a mile away from this. Oh my goodness, that's horrible. So you had the same experience I had in junior high school when I lived in that rich town. So next week we're going to be coming in with the dark mixture. And we're going to be pulling up some of those darks. Now, let's, let's take a look at his collar, shall we? So right here, we can come in with white pastel. We can pull out this collar here. There we go. Now, where we're going to crop it is right here. So you're not going to see anything of the tie. So right now, I, I have a lot going down. So let's see, uh, Bill says you'll crack me up about school buses. Chicago didn't do that except for the desegregation buses we were doing in the 70s. Wow, cool. But, you know, as far as uh, school buses, I remember when I went to New York City, they gave us subway passes. So... Uh, now, Tone, you, you went to high school in New York City, right? Did you... Uh, were you far from your high school? Did you have did you have one of those subway passes where you didn't have to pay for the subway? So, Mr. Garcia, you're going to get a kick out of this. So, a lot of times we would lose our subway passes and being artists, we would just draw it and then we would just flash it really fast. And uh, I remember one time, a couple of uh, NYPD guys, and I was uh, rushing to school, and I had one of those drawn uh, subway passes because I lost mine, because they gave you one every month. So, and they were two uh, New York City uh, transit police officers. They had the police dogs and everything. Hey, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm going to school. And they're like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like this little skinny kid. I'm so skinny, right, Chris? And I and I'm like, you know, I I lost my pass. I know it's fake. I'm not, you know. He's like, yeah, that's pretty good though. And I'm like, so I says, here's my ID. I go to the High School of Art and Design, you know, and I can't afford to pay the subways. And they were like cracking up and 
they were just really cool. They're like, all right, get out of here. Stay in school. <laughs> they were really they were really cool. But I'll tell you, that was like, oh, my God, that was... Hey, Tone, don't work so hard, okay, my friend? You're doing some really great airbrush art, so that's fantastic. But, yeah, we, we used to... Uh, we used to make our our passes when we lost them when inevitably we lost them chris you know uh, so is there a statute of limitations on that or i'm still in trouble <laughs> <laughs> And remember, you're doing the lights in the in the values. It's not just one value, but there's stuff going on in the value. It's because lights bouncing all over the place, right? So you definitely, it's not just a value shape. You put them in initially, but then you have to do the shapes and the shapes. <laughs> Chris, says, I admit it. And now, it, oh man, that's rough. That was that's rough, Chris. I just, uh, in, I just in, incriminated myself. And uh, so Willie says I should paint money. That would be great. I think I would do a good job. And but then I, you know, I just don't look good in polyester. You know, <laughs> I don't want to be in that. I don't want to be in jail, right? And let's see, uh, uh, Bill says, as a teen, there was nothing to me. Chicago was fairly flat. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Chris says, when they come and get me, I'll find out. <laughs> and Joe says, uh, did you keep any of the artwork from high school? Uh, it would be great. I do have, I think I do have some. I have to look. I did a painting of Madonna that went really well, you know. Uh, believe it or not, back in high school, we had computers uh, donated from the Rockefeller Foundation. They were like a quarter of a million each. And it was computer graphics, but, you know, way back when. But the technology was way ahead. And I did this one of... of uh, Mount, no, uh, Madonna. So I hopefully I'll find that for you. And I did one of the Headless Horseman, which was pretty cool. Monty says he never used a school bus, like had a little, wow, a 50cc Yamaha motorcycle. That's fun. And Wendy says uh, bare feet with cast on. Oh my goodness. There's no snow in Texas. Sometimes, now you guys get snow once in a blue moon, is that true, Wendy? So now we ask ourselves, Tim, what are we neglecting, right? So I'm gonna say I'm neglecting the ear. So let's go ahead. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some, uh, put a little darker text, darker value here because remember white pastel is only going to show up when you have an adjacent color that's darker the more it's going to pop and we want things popping we want things popping and let's see okay so look at that 21 concurrent 22 concurrent so right now in this uh Last part, last few minutes, we have quite a number of people here. So guys and girls, if you can, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that like button. That would be fantastic. And check out my other videos. I just did a uh, speed painting today. Uh, so I want you to check that out. A lot to learn from that. Now, so I'm going to quickly go ahead and put in a dark here. And remember, we're still in the medium mixture. Wait till we come in with the dark mixture. It's like, pow, it's really going to, really going to explode, right? And so we started with some of the light today. And we're coming in with the medium mixture. Next week is going to be the dark mixture to bring everything together. And 
So Wendy says her computer's messing up. Tim, yes, we used to get it every year sometimes. <clears throat> but now, not in the last five years. Oh, bummer. Oh, wow. That stinks. And Brad says he had a storm last night. The plow was there at 9 a.m. cleaning out his yard. Wow. You said you were going to get like nine inches. Is that true, sir? Did that come to pass? Now, Brad's been taking my, my course. He took my course, and now he's in my mentorship program. And he's with me for a year doing some incredible stuff. So when you take my course, you actually have the ability to stay with me with the mentorship program and continue growing, which is just fantastic. So uh, Brad is definitely living proof that the mentorship program works after after you take the uh, workshop with me. So that's, oh wow, so you can have, oh, you have a lot of snow out in Wisconsin, that's for sure. That's very much the truth. So I'm gonna take my freehand shield and I'm gonna protect this here. So next week we're gonna, go, we're gonna do a part six and maybe even a part seven. If it happens, it happens, right? I mean, there's no rush. So, uh, you know, the only rush I have is for you guys and girls to learn. So that's why I'm not doing anything off, off camera, right? Because I need you all to learn. So I know I can paint this, but it's not about me showing off. It's about you all learning. So that's why, you know, there's going to probably be a part seven. So we'll see this from the beginning to the end, and you'll see every aspect with me. And we'll talk a little bit about it as well, which is really fantastic. And so, so you see here, I had to move over the highlight, right? It was too far to the center. And little things like that, when you do find them, they, they make a big difference. I'm gonna make a green juice tonight because uh, I need some nutrients. Not getting it much, so I am definitely going to make a green juice tonight. So we are at 1127, so that means, uh, so this live stream went quick today. Do you guys feel that way, guys and girls? Feel it went fast, I hope so. Uh, I had a good time, and even at the very end, we have 22 people in the room right now. That makes me really happy that, you know, people are getting something from this. Really, uh, really is cool. So thank you everybody for hanging with Tim. Uh, it's 1128, so uh, I'm, I give you the full two, two hours, right? I don't play. I am gonna give you the full two hours. And so you see I, I blew, get any excess pastel on there so I don't uh, oh thank you Steve I really appreciate that uh, thank you Merry Christmas John and Merry Christmas Bill and and Willie and Wendy and let me see I want to make sure John Brad Merry Christmas Monty Merry Christmas and like who else is out my guess Merry Christmas to you I'm glad that your back's feeling much better and I hope everything gets straightened out thank you Wendy I appreciate it so little by little, we're getting Mr. Wonderful uh, coming together. And so, it, hey, thank you. Merry Christmas, Chris. And uh, uh, Feliz Navidad, amigo mio. And uh, that's fantastic. So thank you, guys. Steve Leahy, thank you for hanging out with me. John, John Dickman, John Payne, Scott, Scott Anderson, and uh, Hillbilly. Uh, that's Scott as well. Merry Christmas to you guys. We are at 1129. I guess we're just going to talk about Christmas. So next week, right after Christmas, uh, next, next Wednesday, we are going, so, so these are all the papers that I have in my folder. So I don't have a messy room, just putting that out there. <laughs> Next week, we're going to have, for the first part, we're going to have Mr. Ken from Badger. And it's going to be a live 
interview and you'll see a window of him from Chicago and me here in Jersey and we all can ask him questions and it's going to be just a fantastic milestone for the live stream. The first time we're going to be offering uh, every month we're going to have an interview with somebody influential and a great story in the airbrush world. So I'm excited about that. It's 1130. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. I hope everyone gets everything they want and I wish, you know, Wendy continue getting better. I pray for that and I pray, uh, Bill, for your granddaughter. And so next week, guys, interview with Ken. Take care of yourselves. You guys are great, but you know that. I don't have to tell you. And thank you for hanging out with me.